We're gonna do it like they do in Cardiff. And that's quite enough of that. Good evening, my lovelies. What an absolute joy to be here with you. At, where are we? Two minutes past midnight. It is already tomorrow morning. And I would like to know how today, or strictly speaking, yesterday, because it's now tomorrow, how was today for you? How was your, what day was it? Hang on, one minute. Tuesday, how was your Tuesday? Tell me the best thing that happened to you uh, or the best thing about Tuesday and tell me the one thing that you're looking forward to the most on Wednesday and then I will tell you all about my day. I've had a splendid day. Uh, I slept longer than I should have. I, I, I woke up, I got up at a perfectly reasonable time and then I went back to sleep. Oh yes! Oh yes, and I had a jolly good lunch, and tonight I fell in love, and I'm going to tell you all about that. I had a wonderful love affair tonight. It was perfect. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it was an absolute joy. And you know that I keep nothing from you, my loves. We have no secrets between us. We have the sort of relationship where we can tell each other anything and frequently do. And I'm going to tell you all about it. And I would like to know what you had for lunch. And uh, oh, who's pinging me? Well, how rude. I'm in the middle of a live stream. And it's not even a worthwhile message. It's just that. That. And fortunately, it's the reason I slept longer than usual today, uh, this morning, was well, it was partly because yesterday was kind of a long day anyway. But, you know when you kind of work through your tiredness? And after I did that live last night, I ended up just sitting, sipping wine, thinking about this, that and the other. And before I knew it, it was 3am. 3am, can you believe it? And there was still a bit of wine and there was a bit of supper to be had. And there were inappropriate messages to send. Fortunately, it was after midnight, so they don't count. And um, I thought it was probably wise not to check which messages I actually sent last night. I mean, obviously, obviously, I will have proposed to Bernard. That's absolutely standard. Uh, but God only knows what else I did. But some, th oh, look at that. Some things are just better not known, aren't they? Honestly. So, yeah, so... I had a jolly good sleep in today and, oh, a really excellent lunch. It was jolly nice. And I'm going to tell you all about tonight's love affair. Look at that, there's stuff on the table. I've been having so good. I've done the washing up. Uh, I haven't rinsed it, though. It's still there on the side. It, it, it needs to be rinsed. But at least it's washed. And that means, my loves, we're halfway there. Hold my hand. Hold my hand and we're halfway there. 
hold my hand and I'll take you there. And all of that shenanigans. Now, whose pleasure do I have the company of? Or whose company do I have the pleasure of? Or something along those lines. I mean, just take that random selection of words and rearrange them so that make, they make sense for you. It's all about you, the viewer, the community member, my friend. This is your space. And feel free to make yourself comfortable in it. I mean, we're not going to stand on any ceremony here. There are no formalities. I don't care if you are wearing your nighty and haven't shaved your legs. It doesn't matter. We are at home in our little friendly community, homey space. And we are amongst chums and loved ones. And we should feel no shame about our hairy legs or nighty that, quite frankly, has got some slightly disturbing stains. And it could really do with, you know, one of those hot washes, one of those where you have to get the dial down to about about a quarter to six and then press the button as well so it goes on to like a, a 90 degree wash because some of those stains, they, they don't come out all that easily, do you? Uh, do they? Uh, and But you shouldn't be ashamed of them. That's the point. Hey, we all get older. Things happen. We start to leak in various ways. Who am I to judge? Not I. Nice person. Anyway, who have we got? Jimmy Quinn. Hello. Trace the Greenwood. One of our community channels that you must like and subscribe to. Or face my wrath and my absolute burning need to sit on your head. Uh, Simon is with us, but... Um, uh, no, he's not. Simon was with us and he's now pissed off. Uh, but that was nice. We had a special moment with Simon. Project MGTF, another community channel. George Rogerbotty, Mr. George Rogerbotty, has pleasured us with his company. Um, he Well, he's pleasured me with his company. He may have pleasured you in a plethora of other ways. And if he has, I would like to know about it. So please, tell me if you have been pleasured by Mr. George Rogerbotty. Uh, underscore. Oh, God, you're particularly sexy tonight, underscore. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you pull it off. But my God, you are a burning, smouldering hunk of a sex bum tonight. And uh, God. Dear me, I can feel it emanating over the airwaves, heading in various directions, bouncing off the walls. Can you all feel it too? It can't just be me. Uh, right. Uh, diddly do. Oh, Chaz Brown. Hello. Lovely to see you there. Uh, ahoy there indeed. Hit that like button. Yeah, why not? Why not hit that like button? Uh, go mad. Mustard is here, or was here. I'm behind on the comments already. Or I've only just started, my loves, and already I'm all behind like a cow's tail. But c'est la guerre. A little bit of French for you there. That's just the way it goes, and we're going to have to make the best of it, aren't we? Um, hopefully Mustard is still here. KKC is with us, and quite frankly, that is nothing less than a buttock quivering joy. A joy, do you hear me? And I make no apologies for the joy that I take in having you here with me, enriching my life and hopefully enriching each other's as well. Uh, I've done that. Um, oh, Typhoon Cat, the lovely Liz. Oh, what? I should rub a dub. Oh, dear me. Uh, apologies for that. I don't know what came over me. The lovely Liz is with us, and what a pleasure it probably would be. Uh, that's enough. Can we not go down that route, please? Really? Pull yourself together, man. I know it's midnight. I know it's an hour later than usual. I know you've already had a glass of wine, but there is no excuse for that. 
Liz is a very nice lady with a wonderful collection of cars. And she was kind enough to provide coffee for you at PNHQ and pay for a splendid lunch that you enjoyed very much. So have a bit of respect, you fat old bastard. And I will, and I apologise. Liz, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Lovely to see you. Oh dear, a message held for review. How splendid. Um, I do like messages held for review. Why is that held for review? There's nothing wrong with that. What is that music, please? Asks Trace. That music is the funky track of togetherness. That music encapsulates what you and I have got together. That music is the lifeblood that streams and pulses through our bodies when we are together, albeit via the uh, internet connection. Another message held review. How oh, absolutely splendid. Um, the 70s porn star is here. Look, at the end of the 70s, 1979, I was like eight. Um, I'd have been a mediocre porn star at best when I was in my prime at the age of eight. I would have been well, jailbait, quite frankly, so uh, let's not go there. It's wine o'clock, says Chas Brown, and it is indeed. Cheers to you all. Bottoms up. God love you. God bless you and all who sail in you. Cheers. If you're having a slurp of something, let me know what you're slurping. Oh, unless it's uh, another person who wishes to remain private. Oh, God, I, I, what? I'd have liked to have had a slurp of that lady tonight, the one I fell in love with. I'm going to tell you all about her. Oh, what? Dear me. Ah, now then. Oh, the Master Chief is with us and says, hello, Boaty. And Boaty says, hello, back to you. And thank you for being here. Um... Moon walking sideways across the scullery, yeah. It seems Jeeves isn't the only one who's been at that. I need to do a voice for Roger, but he don't I? It seems Jeeves isn't the only one who's been at the shelly. What? What? <laughs> GPS. OMG! Is with us, and um, that's a thing of such enormous splendidness. Splendidness? Tricky chap's words, that I can scarcely encapsulate it with the scant resources of language that I have here at my command, here at Windy Bum in the glorious Peak District National Park. Ooh. Uh, looks like a bottle of driver tizer. I've got a nasty feeling that driver tizer might be a euphemism for a wee wee. Um, I think he wants to be hit with a rhythm stick on his bottom. Well, I mean, yeah, surprise me. Surprise me. My bottom's here. Go for it. Uh, well, within reason, obviously. Steady, please. We're not in the flying handbag in Blackpool now. Is it the flying handbag? Um, there's a, yeah, it was the flying handbag. Is it still there? The Flying Handbag is, or at least was, a gay pub in Blackpool where, as I've told you before, I had my splendid evening and then went on to a very gay nightclub called the Pink Flamingo and ended up in a rather nice hotel at about four o'clock in the morning where I slept entirely naked in a really tightly made hotel bed with an extra large kebab with chilli sauce that I fell unconscious long before I even thought about eating. And that kebab probed at every single crevice and nook of my nubile body. Uh, and my first action of the morning was a shower, and my second was to pre-warn and tip the chambermaid. Um, my day, says Grace, this is wonderful. Uh, we're going to hear about Trace's day. I, I want to hear about all of your days, but we're going to start with Trace because, quite frankly, she got in first. Now then, my day, says Trace. I have been editing a driving vid and gave myself motion sickness from staring at it. Were you doing that yesterday? I'm sure that yesterday you were editing a driving vid of Scotland or some such. 
Crack on with it, love. How long is this video that it's taking you two days to bloody ed uh, edit it? Um, underscore says, I've got new trousers arriving today. Yesterday wasn't Monday, so that was a good thing about yesterday. Well, new trousers is a splendid thing. Um, and would you mind, Matt, if we all just shared your trouser excitement a little bit? Um, I, for one, plan to allow a good 25, 26 minutes uh, to just be genuinely excited about Matt's trousers. Uh, and I will look forward to that little interlude very much. That's a nice word, isn't it? Interlude. Would you like to say it with me? After three. One, two, three. Interlude. Lovely. Maybe I like it because of the lewd bit. Some things that are lewd can be most awfully pleasant, can't they? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Tuesday was a disaster. Oh dear, well this, this little missive isn't starting well, is it? Tuesday was a disaster. Lloyds Bank are causing an issue that will cost me thousands if I can't sort it. Oh dear me. Uh, oh well, what a what a terrible thing. Um, well, fingers crossed that it does get sorted. Um, uh, oh dear. Well, um, uh, best wishes on that one. Um, that sounds like a, a a very unpleasant situation. And um, yeah, if you need to vent, then feel free to shout at us. We are we're all here for you. Uh, and don't worry if you do lose thousands. Uh, then um, you won't starve and you won't go without a, a, a roof over your head, although that will probably be scant bloody comfort. Um, you know, Matt might let you have a go on his new trousers. Um, there's always a silver lining to every cloud, isn't there, ish? Um, and follows that message up, does KKC, with no lunch, oh dear, the day's getting worse, and pasta for tea. There we are. Pat Phelan says, hello, Boaty. Oh, sorry, I apologise. Hello, Boaty lad. Uh, a very welcome and charming uh, additional bit of familiarity there, to which I am inherently warming, even as I espouse these words, through the gift of spoken language. Thank you. Uh, if, uh, hello, Boaty lad. I'd love to take you out in my red Vauxhall Combo CDTI van. Well, that sounds tremendously exciting. Uh, uh, I would be up for that. I mean, <clears throat> would we be going somewhere to eat or should I pack a picnic? Oh, a CDTI van. Oh, what? Uh, ooh. Um, the best thing about my day, says Trace, I had an amazing Frankfurter sandwich with mustard. Uh, oh, right, okay. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the journey up to PNHQ. Uh, oh, unless you mean the condiment mustard. Best thing about tomorrow? Another Frankfurter sandwich with mustard. Uh, yes, well, if it ain't broke, don't change it, I suppose. Dear me. Classic wheels, Wales. Classic wheel. That's not the easiest thing in the world to say, Mike, is it? Can you say it? Have you had lots of practice? Anyway, Mike's here uh, and says, hello, Boaty, and hello, humans. And um, uh, we, all, um, we all say a great big hello there to you and hope that things are going well. Um, I did ask Mustard how things were because I know that he speaks to you and uh, he mentioned that there'd, there'd been something a bit on the, maybe a bit on the positive side. So um, hopefully that is so. And as always... We all send you our very best wishes. Um, Facebook suspended him for 30 days. Who? Who have they suspended for 30 days? Mustard is here. Um, today I've been wandering around in Google Maps, vaguely pondering how to visit, uh, how to fit, blah, 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 blah. I used to be a professional. Can you believe that? Can you believe that this shambling, overweight, wrecked, 
semi-drunken oaf that is sitting here in front of you. I used to be a professional. I used to be able to speak and sing and communicate. And now look at me. Barely a shadow of what I once was. Hey ho, never mind, eh? Uh, today, says Trace, I've also been wandering around in Google Maps, vaguely pondering. I'm very fond of a pond, but I'm fonder of a ponder. Ooh, uh, how to fit a visit to you, Boaty? In parentheses, no, uh, brackets. Or are they the same thing? I've forgotten. It's late. I don't care. And a meal from Eastern Blue doing my next road trip up north. Um, I'm sure you can manage that, Trace. You're a, you're a woman of immense perspicacity. And I have no doubt that you will be able to factor both of those two things. I mean, you could combine them into one thing. And you could just arrange to be at Instan Blue and PNHQ on a Monday. Uh, and then you would be visiting me, Mustard, Eastern Blue, and whoever else rocked up to PNHQ on that Monday. You'd be visiting us all simultaneously. Oh, I totally nailed that word, didn't I? And at the same time, and everything. Uh, oh, uh, KKC says, nice video tonight, Captain. So he's complimenting somebody else on my live stream for their live stream. Uh, but I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, you know, no ego here. Much. Um, but I'm glad that you enjoyed Captain Mustard's live stream. Mustard is my BFF, my best flipping friend. And... I would take enormous pleasure in him enjoying his own live stream and you enjoying his live stream. There's no competitive between us, apart from that there's actually an immense amount of competitiveness between us. But if you ignore that, there isn't any, apart from all of that great big mountain of competitiveness that we're going to ignore and pretend isn't there. It's like an elephant in the room. Uh, which, you know, would be kind of a difficult thing to ignore, especially if it pooed on your foot or nurdled with your dibble glidgets with its big old trunk. What did the elephant say to the naked man? Well, it's cute, but how do you pick anything up with it? There you are. Uh, and that was a little joke that I've just thrown in there, free of charge, for your perusal. Uh, oh, a message health review. How absolutely splendid. Um, you're so damn sexy, Boaty. Uh, dear me. Uh, thank you. Well, you know, that's a compliment and I will take it. Um, I mean, I used to be a little. Uh, I suppose, you know, if you had really low standards and the lights were low and you were squinting a bit and... Uh, uh, and you were exceptionally drunk, then maybe, well, no, take it. It's a compliment. Take it. Embrace it. Hold it warmly to you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you for thinking that I'm sexy. And I'm taking that thought and rubbing it on my own nipples. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe that was taking it a little bit far. I could have just held it to my chest. But then, you know, my nipples were kind of there and I just automatically went to them. You do that sometimes, don't you? Hmm. Anyway, there they are. I once used to call them Jeffrey and Archer and then I realised that that was a bit silly. So I stopped doing, doing that and now I can't stop touching them. That's actually quite pleasant. I wish it was somebody else doing it, mind. Or possibly two other people. One approaching me from the pantry side and one approaching me from the sit. That really is getting really quite pleasurable now. So I really ought to stop it. Kind of don't want to, but I really should. Um, <clears throat> Why, well, thank you, Mr. Bodhi. It must be the intention to bake a pie that's given that vibe off. Yeah, that would be it. There's nothing sexier than a pie baker. Uh, 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 oh, uh, yes, we... Oh, dear, no. Um, 
<laughs> you aren't quivering my buttocks, mate. Today has been bad enough as it is. I'm sorry for that, mate. Uh, speak for yourself, Boaty. My route is free for... Uh, oh, dear me. Dean Matthew, moving swiftly on from underscore, who is um, very much the Kenneth Williams of his, uh, of his generation, uh, mixed in with uh, Chubby Brown. Um, oh, Chubby Brown fact. Uh, what's his real name? Competition time. Uh, and in which television programme did his real name appear? Over to you. Who would live in a house like this? David, it's over to you. That didn't sound half bad from this side. That might be the wine though. Anyway, uh, anyway, the point is, D Mac is here. Can we just concentrate on that, please? D Mac has made the effort to join us, and quite frankly, D Mac deserves a bit of attention. So let's all welcome D Mac. There you are. I hope you feel amply welcomed. Uh, uh, oh, and uh, Jabberwocky 220 GTI. I mean, it's Liz again. It's Liz. Uh, it's, would a, li a Liz by any other name would smell as sweet. What? Uh, uh, hello from the other me. Uh, two likes. Bonus. Um... List times two, Tony, uh, oh, yeah, uh, poor, yes, um, oh, <laughs> I like this one, Chris Packett um, is with us and says, hey, Bodie, evening all, and I like that very much, do you get it, Chris Packett, Chris Packett, that is a very good name, Chris Packett, and you are more than welcome, <clears throat> Bra uh, right, okay, Ah, Bad Books, who, if I remember correctly, is actually called Steve, because we are now on first name terms and everything. Uh, Steve, if I've remembered his name correctly, if his name's a bloody Peter, I'm in all sorts of trouble now. So I've committed, I've committed to Steve. I've, well, I haven't committed to him in the sense of, uh, you know, marriage or uh, some form of, um, some form of legal entity uh but i have committed to calling him steve so if he's not called steve i am in more shit than a faggot oh no you can't say that uh i'm in more trouble than uh what's his name who who would have been more trouble than i was going to say dick emery and i don't mean dick emery i mean the other dick who's the other dick the one that there used to be a television program about maybe his name wasn't dick who was the one who was always in a load of trouble that I think his name is Dick? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the point is that the artist that I'm choosing to call Steve says, the best thing about Tuesday was a tropical 10 degree sea at Butter Bridge. Bloody hell. Uh, hoping the Sugar Beet Mountain next door is finally all dispatched to the sugar factory. Butter Bridge is a name from my past used to be known as the Borough and it used to be a dual carriageway that we used to hold a certain form of cycling race on called time trials, individual time trials. And people would travel from all over the country to the Borough to race on those courses because there was such an incredible amount of passing traffic uh, and a lot of HGVs that, well, there were, and there was an upside and a downside to that. The upside was that the amount of passing traffic and the amount of wind suckery would mean that you would almost certainly achieve a personal best time. The downside was that you also stood a bloody good chance of getting knocked off and killed by one of them, which very sadly happened to quite a few of my contemporaries. But what a nice trip down memory lane to hear, the, to hear about the butter again. Butter bridge, blimey. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's up north somewhere. Now, can we try and catch up with these comments, please? Yeah. Oh, where's my wine? Don't leave that there. What's the matter with you? Um, <laughs> thank you for the OMG, Brody. I expected that OMG then. Ah, right. 
just says, uh, right, okay. Uh, hang on. What a queer kebab. Uh, oh, okay. Um, oh, uh, apparently we can feel away at uh, Matt's trouser excitement, so that's nice. Uh, oh, must have had Kabida again in, in Stambley. You can't have too much of a good thing. Your diet's gone to fucking pot, hasn't it, matey? Dear, oh dear. Was it a lunch with uh, Senior Mustard today? Uh, if it was, then you're forgiven. Uh, I am joining uh, with the... Uh, right. Oh, we're all getting excited about Matt's trousers. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, sorry to hear that, KKC. Uh, yeah, that is kind of a serious thing that we shouldn't be joking about. Hopefully it will all uh, be okay. <clears throat> My trouser says, Matt, I've never been this popular when I'm wearing them. I can't wait for them to arrive now because they appear to be special trousers. They are indeed special trousers. And we're all emotionally invested in them. You're just a boat wreck, we'll forgive you, says Charles Brown. That's most kind. Uh... Oh, okay. Um, I enjoyed Mustard's video, says KKC. Didn't see the live stream. Uh, I haven't watched the video yet. Uh, I know I got mentioned in it, but I haven't had a chance to watch it as yet. I was a little later than I planned to be this evening, my loves, because the restaurant was exceedingly busy. Uh, incredibly busy for a Tuesday. In fact, the restaurant was full to bursting. Uh, and it was kind of all hands on deck because we weren't staffed for a full restaurant. We didn't have a kitchen porter. Uh, we didn't have any um, wait people. Um, so <clears throat> I was running around doing a bit of everything today. I've washed a mountain of dishes. I did the pots. Well, half of the pots. And I fell in love. I'm gonna tell you all about that. God, she had this neck. Oh, what a neck and the most wonderfully delicate ears. I'm not going to lie to you. I wanted to nibble her. Now then, I've admitted it. I'm not proud, but neither am I ashamed. Oh, she was absolutely splendid. She really was. Uh, now then, where did I get to? Uh, diddly do. Uh, 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 well, uh, 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 so thinking about uh, 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 right, yeah, okay. Uh, all right, Trace. Uh, Mustard's video are ace. Videos are ace. Of course they are, Mike. Um, that's why he is much more popular and successful than I am. And rightly so. This, you know, I pale into insignificance compared to the munificent greatness that is Captain Mustard. Uh, a continent full of greatness, rolled up and stuffed into some dirty trousers and a beard in the most wonderful way. And we all adore him, myself included. I'm not even jealous of him much. Um, don't freeze your wine. Uh, I won't. Uh, oh, this message is held for review. Uh, should I play with your nipples again? Uh, yes, please. Royston Vasey, 100% correct, and League of Gentlemen, 100% uh, correct. Um, uh, yes, no, uh, uh, right. Um, oh, Mark, Mark, is it bollocks? I thought you were Steve. Why did I think that? Oh dear. Um, Dick Barton! That's who I meant. I'm in more trouble than Dick Barton. Not bloody um, Prince Andrew. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, oh, here's an interesting question. What bikes did you ride? Rally or Peugeot? Well, I'm going to give you a genuine answer to that in case you're actually interested. It'll probably bore you all to tears, but that is a genuine and serious question and one that I genuinely want to answer. Okay. Um, ah. 
When I was a young nipper, uh, I rode uh, a Major Nichols, uh, I rode a Chinelli, and I rode a Carlton. But by the time I was seriously, seriously racing, for a period, um, I rode Colnago or Colnago, Ernesto Colnago or Colnago, because they were the frames that were provided to me. But whoever was building those bloody frames was quite frankly an idiot. I got equipped with, uh, with a road frame for one season. Now, I'm a tall chap, I'm six foot five, and I've got extremely long thighs. So, and I know this is gonna be boring for some of you, well, probably all of you. But they supplied me with this frame and quite rightly, they built the frame with a very long top tube to accommodate my long thighs. Uh, and in order to achieve that long top tube, they built it with a very shallow angled C tube. Uh, and it was about 71 degree C tube, uh, which made the, the frame very, un, would have made the frame very unresponsive. So to counteract that, they gave it a 75 and a half degree head angle. And if you've ever tried to ride a bicycle frame with a 75 and a half degree head angle, it's fucking unrideable. It was absolutely ridiculous. And I ditched my sponsorship and my father and I decided that we would start designing and building our own frames. Uh, and that's what we did. We built uh, the first of my racing frames that we built, um, we built together on the, on the kitchen table um and by building so we you know we bought the tubes bought the lugs filed the lugs mitered the lugs mitered the tubes and we steel pinned them and then we just took them to a guy in Celio to have them uh tig welded uh together but um all of my for the majority of my career uh all of my frames were designed and built by myself uh, I had certain ideas uh, and I had certain good ideas because they were then copied by a lot of other people. Um, for example, I ride, because I'm a big chap, I ride a very large frame. And the problem with a large frame is that they flex like that. Um, and some of your power is going into pushing the frame sideways rather than pushing the drive frame forwards. So it seemed perfectly obvious to me that you needed to make the main triangle of the frame, the down tube, the C tube, and the, um, and the top tube, you needed to make that triangle as small as possible for maximum stiffness. So <clears throat> I started building frames with a dropped top tube and then extended head tube and C tube. Uh, and I built frames with a curved top tube um, which made perfect sense to, sense to me, uh, but nobody else was doing. And after I started doing it, then big pro teams in Europe um, started doing it. Indeed, um, when Miguel Andiran uh, was riding for Bonesto and they were riding Pinarello frames, they copied my exact design. And every single frame had a drop top tube, no matter how small the frame was. Uh, the other thing that was my idea before everybody else copied it was what are now known as tri bars, triathlon handlebars, where you're in that position. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you how that came about. Um, again, I'm a big chap uh, and I was a bit of a sprinter. And uh, back in the day, I used to do a lot of weight training and I had very wide shoulders. They've kind of disappeared. A lot of my body has disappeared now. Um, and so I used to have very wide handlebars. If any of you ride a bike, I used to ride Chinelli 6644s, which meant that the handlebars were 44 centimetres wide, uh, whereas most people would use 42s, 40s, or even 38s or 39s on their track, which meant that <clears throat> my arms were wider than most people's. And even if you're down in on the hooks, as we used to say. So I used to ride with a very, very flat back. I was very flexible. I stretched every single day, many times. But even if you're as flat as you can be, your arms are still there and you're creating a massive wind trap. And 
when I was steaming along at 30 miles an hour, I can't remember why I did. I think actually, I think my wrists were aching. And just to rest my wrists, uh, I went at about 30 miles an hour from my hands being there on the hooks to resting my hands on the top of the bars like that, just to take the pressure off my wrists. It was on a long ride. It was like on a 140 mile training ride, something like that. Uh, and my wrists were just giving me a bit of jip and I just rested them like that. And what I noticed was that everything became quiet. Um, because if you're cycling at 30 miles an hour, you get a lot of wind noise. And when I did suddenly did that, I noticed it got a lot quieter, which meant that there was less wind noise, which meant that there was less wind resistance. So that was something else that I started started doing and it kind of took off and became a thing. Uh, so there you go, that was an answer to that question. Um, serious question, in your Midland cycling, cycling days, did you come across Mark Stevens? Serious answer, yeah. Uh, oh, Mark Stevens. There was a Matt Stevens, who was um, a great rider. Uh, Mark Stevens. Give me a clue. Who did he ride for? Which team did he ride for? Was she a swan? She had a beautiful neck. I, I really did want to nibble her. I'm not going to lie about it. I enjoyed your video on food, said DMAC. Made me extra hungry. I made another dinner. Um, oh, good for you. Uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed my video on food. You are one of the very few people who enjoy my videos on food. No, I mean, not many people watch any of my bloody videos. But even fewer than normal watch Boaties and Notches. <laughs> if it's that one that you're talking about. I get a few more views for my Boat in the Kitchen where I actually film how to cook stuff. And I haven't done one of those for ages and I, I really should do it, shouldn't I? Um, I am incredibly passionate about food. Uh, and I'm not a good cook. Uh, I'm, I'm learning, I'm trying to improve, uh, but I'm not, I'm not a trained chef and I'm not even uh, a good cook. But I've been on a bit of a learning curve over there, over the last few years. And, uh, I'm rather loving it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, Nico is with us. Wonderful. Um, were you in a bike racing team, Boaty? Says DMAC. Yeah, uh, I was. Uh, I was a pro cyclist. Uh, uh, well, I was an amateur to begin with, as a juvenile and a junior, and then semi-pro, and then pro. And yeah, I was in. I was in various teams over my. Uh, uh, over my um, career. Uh, da, da, da. Oh yeah, I knew you'd get annoyed if I started talking by trains. I've finished now, it's all over with. Very interesting, say Bad Books. Reynolds 531 or competition uh, tubing? Uh, well, 531 competition was 531, 531C. Then over the years you had 531 SL, then you had 653 and 753. Um, trying to remember, I tended to build in Columbus actually, uh, and my favorite tubing was probably Columbus SLX. Uh, I tried Ishiwata, couldn't get on with that, uh, but I was probably more of a Columbus man. 653 was okay. I was too heavy for 753, um, to be completely honest. And, you know, obviously for, uh, you know, for a training frame or winter hack, 531 was like the uh, industry base minimal, uh, minimal standard. But yeah, I was more of a Columbus man than a, than a Reynolds man, in fairness. Uh, 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 Judith Durham was nice. Oh, okay. Um, Boaty, oh dear me. Ackles and Pollock could build tubes. James Wilson is with us. Good evening. Does anyone use 38 inch bars? Um, 38 inch? God, no. 38 centimetres? Yeah. Um, 
On the track, on the track, people would use thirty eights. More usually thirty nines. Um, I didn't like riding push bikes when I was young, says James. I actually learned at 16 on a sports bike and now have a better suited Carrera mountain bike in blue. And I put a Rover sticker on it. <laughs> Chinese madam wore him out. That's why he doesn't ride a bike anymore. Says, uh, yeah, well, there's almost some truth in that. The reason I stopped riding a bike was quite a sad one. Um, as I've mentioned to you before, I have MH, malignant hyperexia. Uh, and that meant that I couldn't have operations, I couldn't have anaesthetics. Um, or if I did have them, there was such an incredible risk that they would only anaesthetise me if it was a life or death situation. I had an injury through using um, the first generation of clipless pedals in the mid-1980s that were supplied by, to my sponsor through a French company called Look, developed from ski bindings. The prototype pedals had zero rotational movement. Um, production pedals had a minimum of 0.5 degrees. Anybody who used the prototype pedals, uh, having been used to clips and straps with shoe plates, buggered up their tendons, um, including famous names like Bernardino. Um, and an operation was required to sort it out and I couldn't have the operation. So, I sacrificed my entire childhood, adolescence and early adulthood. I shortened my life and I made myself infertile. I gave everything to my athletic career and it was ended just as I was beginning to do something on the world stage um, through a silly bloody injury like that. And that's why I stopped riding the bike. And a couple of times I've tried to ride for pleasure to recapture the the pleasure, but I never really had pleasure from riding a bike. I was never really allowed to. My dad had me training from the moment I could from the moment I could throw a leg over the saddle. So the problem was that when I went out to just try and have a leisure ride and enjoy myself, I'm programmed to, to train. So I just went out at training speed at, you know, evens or 21, 22 mile an hour, which, you know, back in the day, you'd do that for 150 mile without turning a hair. Uh, but of course, having been off the bike for a while and having an injury, um, you try and do that and you're not really capable of it. And it just annoyed me and frustrated me. So um, I got very upset and annoyed by that. And I had nothing to do with cycling, which was my passion, my life. I had nothing to do with it for m more than a decade. I pretended it didn't exist uh, until I was in my 30s, 30s or late 20s. Hang on, I'm on 30, 20, 22. I'd have been about 30. Um, and <clears throat> the pain had dulled a bit. Uh, and I'd done other things in my life at, at that stage. Um, you know, I'd run the car showrooms and the auctions. I'd made some money. I'd owned amazing cars. I'd slept with a lot of women. Um, I had my singing career. I had my other successful businesses and I'd started traveling the world. Um, so I wasn't too sour about my lost career on the bike. In fact, I probably thought uh, that you know, I'd actually had a better life because of it, because pro cyclists have a very short life expectancy. The last time I checked, uh, average life expectancy of a pro was 52 years old, uh, and mostly through suicide. Um, it's a hard life on the bike, I tell you. Um, and I've spoken about all of this before, you know, the endorphins, the, the incredible pleasure you get from the incredible pain that you cause yourself and then stopping doing it and trying to find something to replace it and have, and people go for drugs and booze and just end up topping themselves with all sorts of mental health issues um so i was kind of thought maybe i'd had a lucky escape and i got back into cycling but not actually doing it um i set up a business dealing in the stuff that excited me when i was a teenager uh, and amongst doing other things, I spent a good few years 
where I was just driving around Europe, stopping at every bike shop and wholesaler and buying all of their old stock from the 60s, 70s and 80s. I even bought an entire factory in Belgium. Uh, and I set up a business on, um, uh, on eBay mostly, um, where I was selling all of this stuff to the growing collectible market in America and the Far East. Uh, and had an amazing time doing it and earned a lot of money. Um, but yeah, I kind of fell back in love with retro cycling and now I, um, I hang out with, with uh, other racers from my era in various Facebook groups and we're all just old farts now who talk about how it was much better back in our day and we're much tougher than the, the current crop and um, kind of show off and tell lies about how good we were and that's really good fun. Um, in fact, there might even be somebody watching this now who, um, who he was kind of a, a hero of mine when we were racing. Um, he was, uh, you know, he was the, the guy, one of the guys I had on my posters on my bedroom wall. Uh, and uh, we never encountered each other much when I was actually racing because um, we were on slightly different paths. He's a little bit older than me, so when I was a juvenile, he was racing as a junior. When I was a junior, he was racing as a senior. When I was a senior on the UK scene, he'd already gone over to the continent, uh, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, but we've got really friendly since when we're both in our bloody, well, I'm in my 50s, he's in his 60s, so nice things can happen. Anyway, that's waffling on about all sorts of other things. Um, I like the food vids, says, uh, food vids, says Liz. Thank you. I am one of your Boaties Noshes fans and Boatie in the Kitchen, says Grace. It's what started me watching you. Oh, the 20p noodle vid. Brilliant. Um, Mark Stevens has 10 years on you, to be fair. Huge profile on finance came from Redditch. Um, who... Who did you ride for, Mark Stevens? I mean, my home club uh, was Redditch Arnhem PCC. Uh, and even when I started riding for proper racing clubs, I still rode second claim for the Redditch. And I knew all of them, and I don't remember a Mark Stevens. Um, maybe it'll pop back into my mind or something. <clears throat> I bumped up your advert and watch hours last night. I saw that, George, and thank you very much. Did you ride in the milk race? No, uh, the milk race had ceased to be a thing by the time I became a senior. Um, I used to think a dodgy back made cycling painful, but it turns out it was undiagnosed his hip issues. Oh, dear. Ackles and Pollock built the smallest tubes in the world. T.I. bought them before going bust. Um, I use a bike every day, that's why I'm so fit. Fair play to you, D-Mac. The bloke at the top of my street ran Earwash Cycling Club in the 90s. Ah. Uh, time for me to go to bed. Thanks, very much. It's been good. KKC is off. Uh, and uh, Bad Books is also off. Are we all off? Is that it? Have I bored you with my talk on cycle tubing and racing? And I haven't, I've barely told you about the woman I fell in love with. She was absolutely lovely. There was, um, there was a table of eight ladies and they're like there and the bar is here and the, the route through to the kitchen is there and she was sitting at the last man standing there and the, oh, and she had this fabulous neck uh, and gorgeous, delicate ears and I kept finding excuses to walk past her and I just wanted to nibble that neck and nibble on those ears and she had a cute smile uh, and a um, little bit, uh, very, very slightly disappointing when she stood up, um, if I'm completely honest. Um, slightly low centre of gravity, very slightly too broad in the beam, but, you know, that's being overly fussy. She was absolutely lovely, and I totally fell in love with her. Um, you know, she appeared by surprise, I fell in love, we had a magnificent love affair of which she was obviously totally unaware and she buggered off uh they, they had a splendid night and they had 
we took photographs of them for them and uh, they had some lovely food and some nice drinks. Um, and she's got no idea that I was head over heels in love with her for two and a half hours. Isn't life a funny thing? But there we are. Um, right, well, okay. Well, should we actually do the hour thing tonight, seeing as it's going to be like five to one in the morning? At one o'clock, I will play you out, my lovelies. So we've got love is in the air. So we've got like five minutes to say good night. And it seems weird only doing an hour. And I'm only supposed to be doing an hour. And I know it didn't start until midnight. But it feels like we've barely got going. And it was over before it began. Those were the days, weren't they? Dear me. Premature ejaculation in three easy steps. Pump, pump, squirt. Uh, it is weird, isn't it, Trace? It is weird that I'm finishing prematurely. Well, <laughs> uh, there's obviously a joke there. Uh, yeah, it feels really weird doing uh, only an hour. I'm not sure if I feel as if I'm cheating you or if I'm being cheated. But it does feel weird. But it is late and I've had such a lazy day today. I've done sod all, really. And I need to do things tomorrow. Uh, oh, am I, I was thinking of... I was thinking of doing a Boaties Bugs tomorrow. I haven't done a Boaties Bugs for ages. Uh, and I was thinking about doing one. But then I've got other videos to edit and I've got uh, I fancy roast beef for lunch tomorrow, my love, so I'm not gonna lie for you, to you. I fancy roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. My first belch just crept in before the end. How absolutely wonderful, how splendid. So, yeah, so I might not do a Boaties Bugs, but I might, you know, it's there. It's, it's like Schrodinger's cat. You won't know whether I've done a Boaties Bugs or not until tomorrow night's live stream, because there will be one tomorrow night. This is a new regime now, one hour live stream, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, can't do it Friday and Saturday, late night at the restaurant. But uh, yeah, it's going to be live streams ahoy and we can be all current that I can keep you up to date with stuff and you can keep me up to date with stuff. You can tell me when you've washed your underpants and stuff like that and what you've had for dinner and how your day has been and what made you happy and what made, made you sad. I'd like to learn all of these things about you. The more that, you know, the more I find out about you, the more I fall in love with each and every one of you. And the more I want to tickle you until you squeeze or break wind or something of that nature. I'd like to talk about how many balsamic vinegars, if any, you have in your kitchen. There's, there's so much that we've got to find out about each other, my loves. And with a one hour live stream, five nights a week, we're going to have the opportunity to do that. So by the time it comes to the socials and spring and all of the wonderful things that are going to happen this year, we will already be more than just good friends. We will be kindred spirits. And when we meet each other for the first time, it will be like meeting one of your oldest friends, or possibly not. It might be like meeting somebody that you hope will only ever be a distant acquaintanceship. And it might be a crushing disappointment. But, you know, these are the chances that we have to take in it. Uh, right. Um. <laughs> Welcome, Betty's maiden burp. Oh, oh, I can't do another. Till two o'clock? No, nobody will stay here. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, I have one, bo uh, oh, one balsamic for you. Once the head gasket is cleared, I'll get the streetwise cleaned up. So if you're interested in using it for a review, I'll be there. I would love to review your streetwise. I've never driven one. I've never even sat in one. Uh, and 
I would jump at the opportunity to spend a little more time with you and review your car. That would be fabulous. That would be like a, a double whammy of goodness. Plus you're local, better still. So, there we are. Now you might be wondering what I'm going to be having for supper tonight. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you frankly, openly and honestly. I had planned for supper tonight my old favourite Chinese chicken curry. That's what I had planned. I was even greatly looking forward to, to it. But because the restaurant was so much busier than we anticipated, we had to call in some, oh hello, more girlfriend stories. I have a wayward nipple, keep him talking. What girlfriend stories do you want? Tell me what girlfriend stories you want. Ask me a, ask me a question that will prompt me into a story about a, a certain girlfriend because um, I wouldn't know where to start. Um, there, you know, there, there, there have been a few. I wouldn't know where to go with that. Which sort of girlfriend would you like to know about? What sort of story would you like to hear? Anyway, because the restaurant was busier than uh, anticipated and expected, um, we had to call in some emergency help in the shape of the gorgeous Bikas who you will have seen on uh, at least one of my videos. He's a lovely guy. I'm really, really fond of him. He's very, very funny. Uh, and because that one extra person who is a fan of the staff curry, the younger generation are not a fan of the staff curry, interestingly enough. Now, I'm here to tell you that the staff curry is the best thing that you'll ever eat. But the younger generation who were born in the Nepal but came over to the UK when they were quite young, they associate staff curry with poverty. Uh, they associate it with uh, a poverty life in very, very rural Nepal where there's no running water, um, electricity is intermittent. And that's what they associate it with. Uh, and they have a preference for... The, the European type dishes. Bikas is just about old enough that he's a staff curry man. So that was enough for me to go to Sainsbury's and buy a chicken uh, and, uh, and we made staff curry. When we make staff curry, we, um, <clears throat> we, uh, we don't use the restaurant chicken, the, the boneless stuff, we buy a chicken and we skin it and we butcher it uh, and you know everything's everything's served on on the bone and i bought an extra small chicken from sainsbury's uh which was two pounds 86 p uh and fed four of us quite happily so that's what i've got for supper tonight i've got um i've got staff curry and it's a very unexpected staff curry which is kind of the best type oh um what I didn't bring was a nut, uh, I didn't, oh, we were really busy in cleaning down. I didn't make a naan bread. But, in the finest blue seat of tradition, I think, yeah. Here is a naan bread that I made. In fact, I made this naan bread on my birthday on the 14th of January. I keep an emergency stack of stuff in the, in the freezer. And that's in the, that was in the bread drawer in the freezer. And there, one third of a naan bread. And that will do nicely for tonight's supper. Would you like to see the rest of the bread drawer? So I'm gonna leave that out to defrost and I'll pop that in the oven for a short period of time. Um, what else have we got in here? This is interesting live stream stuff, isn't it? I'm showing you the bread drawer in my main freezer. Um, one slice of Hovis white slice that I'm going to have for my breakfast um, t 
tomorrow morning. Um, one naan bread that I made on the 20th. One roti that I made on the 15th. And about a quarter of a French loaf that I completely forgot about. That, and that I will have with soup on possibly on Thursday. Yeah, possibly on Thursday. So I'm, I'm definitely having beef tomorrow, my loves. Uh, definitely, 100%. Oh, and that reminds me. If you remember, I cooked a joint of beef the other week. So if I'm having beef tomorrow, I need to put this in the fridge to defrost overnight. Look at that. Look at that. How fabulous is that? Eh? Portion frozen. So that's going to be my lunch tomorrow. And I don't have to cook it. I just have to, um, I just have to do some roast potatoes, Yorkshire pudding, some fresh green beans, and make a nice gravy. So this is going in the fridge to defrost overnight. So I'm glad you reminded me about that. Thank you very much. And let's just check. I have got, I have got green beans, so that's good. Um, I've got a potato. That, you know that's going to be roasted tomorrow. So yeah, that's lunch sorted. I'm very excited about that. Now then, uh, oh, what was I doing? Oh, that's what I was going to do, isn't it? So, you know, that's another special little moment between us, isn't it? You know, I've shared something that's mundane, meaningless, but it's part of my life. And you are part of my life. And now we've got that shared togetherness. And when you come to Windy Bum and you want some bready goodness, you know where to go, to the bread roll. It's, uh, how are you? How rude. I do apologize. It's the after 1 a.m. burp. I've normally gone by now. Uh, and I'm clearly not, oh, I, I, I'm not well versed in suppressing the post 1am burp. We're entering a whole new level of familiarity here, aren't we? My goodness me, I'll be getting my kit off and parading around in my underpants next. Uh, but yeah, if you were wondering, the bread drawer is in the main freezer, not to be confused with the cutting freezer, that's over there. You know where that is by now, don't you? The bread drawer is the second drawer down, my loves. All right, so... Yeah, that's where you go for all of your uh, bready items. Now then. Uh, okay. Bizarre girlfriend stories, any what the fuck stories. Sexy ones, American ones. Tits. <laughs> uh, is that wine solid yet? Probably. Show us food. All right, I'll do you some girlfriend stories before they go. <laughs> oh, Robert Joe's with us. Fabulous. All right. So what girlfriend stories did you want? You wanted uh, an American one. You wanted sexy ones and you wanted bizarre ones. All right. Um, I'll tell you about the Ice Maiden. Shall I? Have, have I told you that one before? Might have told you it before. Can't remember. Uh, the Ice Maiden is a bizarre one. Um, okay. So... It's, oh God, when would it have been? Um, it's, it's, it's like the late 90s or the early 2000s. Uh, and I've got, the, I've got the car show rooms, but I'm also singing. Um, <clears throat> I've gone, th it was after the amateur competition, uh, competition circuit it was after i won that big talent show uh it was after it was after i turned pro but it was before i fully launched um the corporate stuff and it was before i bought ghost and nightingales the entertainment agency 
Um, it was when I was doing small cabaret shows, <clears throat> mostly around the Midlands with the odd one further afield, before I went massive and started doing all of the corporate promotional stuff. Uh, and we had myself and my best mate Rob, who was my compare and um, sound and light engineer, <clears throat> um, and who else was with me? Mel was with me at that point, who was uh, who was a DJ and vocalist. Uh, I had Jenny with me. I had Steve with me. But we had some, what would you call them? I suppose you'd call them groupies. Um, I sp yeah, I suppose they were like groupies. And they used to like hang around and turn up and follow us about. Uh, and one of them was a girl called Sharon. And she said that she had this um, annoying mate, acquaintance, who was um, a girl or woman who was so up herself um, and such a show off about this, that and the other, including cars. Um, she claimed she had this E-type Jaguar uh, and she knew this person and she knew that person and she went to this party and she went to that party. And <clears throat> Sharon said that she had been unable to cut her out in any lies. She was sure that she was lying about all of this, but she wasn't able to cut her out. And she said, can I bring her along to a show and will you talk to her? Because <clears throat> when she starts talking about these cars, you are obviously an expert. So you can ask her questions about this car she allegedly owns uh, and you will be able to catch her out. And when she says that she knows this celebrity and she's been to this party, you will probably know them and you probably actually did go to that party. So again, you can catch her out. Uh, and it just went on along like this. <clears throat> and she did exactly that. She brought her along to a show and I'm trying to remember where it was. Um, KKC, if you're still there, you might be able to help me out on this. It was... Um, a big hotel, oh, um, uh, it was outside of Bromsgrove. If you go out on the Kidderminster Road from Bromsgrove, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe five mile outside of Bromsgrove on the Kiddy Road, there was a big hotel up on the left-hand side. And I can't remember for the life of me what it was called, but uh, I, bet, I bet you'll remember. Um, and we would, oh, Jimmy, thank you, mate. Bless you. Thank you very much. Oh, don't freeze the wine. Yeah, good idea. Uh, right, okay, let's just check the wine. So, I'm doing this show at this, uh, oh, it's a bit slushy. So I'm at this hotel on the, on the Kidderminster Road. Uh, we've rocked up with either one or two vans. I can't remember what the show was. I can't remember how big a show it was. I can't remember how big the sound and light rigs were. But I do remember that... <clears throat> I remember that I was there. I remember that Rob was there. Jenny was there. Steve was there. Mel was there. And Sharon and her mate, who I can't remember her name's mate, uh, her mate's name. I do remember they were very keen that I, I should have a threesome with them both, and I never did. Annoyingly, um, I don't know. Must have always had better. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but they turned up with this girl, uh, and <clears throat> back in the day, then when I. When I did shows then, we used to drink. We all used to drink. And I mean drink well, you know. Um, <clears throat> that was just how it went. Those were the days, carefree days of youth, eh? <clears throat> so 
I was talking to this girl all night um, and she wasn't quite so, she didn't do the big show off thing with me. I don't know, maybe she smelt a trap or, you know, maybe just chatting that she obviously got the sense that if she lied to me, I would know and I would catch her out. Um, sorry about that, loves. Sorry about that, just a random, <clears throat> a random internet moment out here in the, in the peak. Uh, where did I get to when that cut off? So we're taking the show down. I've been chatting on and off with this, with this girl uh, over the night. Uh, but as we're taking down and packing away, I'm, you know, I'm chatting more and more. And it would have been a good show. There were always good shows. And, you know, I don't know, maybe some people are attracted to people who are the centre of attention. Maybe she liked my singing voice. Maybe she liked the fact that I was up there on the stage. I don't know what, whatever, but whatever it was, she invited. She said, "Can I come back with you? Right? Uh, can I jump in the van and can I come back with you?" She'd got a lift there with Sharon, but she wanted to come back with me. So, um, <clears throat> and she was probably not said this before. She was a very attractive girl, very attractive. Um, so. Not unnaturally, let's just have a quick look at the, uh... <laughs> I'm back, I'm back, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Thank you, Jimmy Quinn, thank you. <clears throat> that was uh, a super thing from, uh, a super sticker from G Jimmy Quinn. Uh, very kind, very much appreciated. Thank you, mate, um, bless you. It all helps, it really does. Um, so she said, can I come back with you? Uh, so I'll get to the good bit. Uh, so she jumps into the van with uh, with us. I would have dropped some people off uh, at their at their homes or whatever. Uh, and I was living in a place called Cook Hill then, uh, which is quite um, a posh uh, posh part. It was um, it was like Millionaire's Row. Uh, if you know it, it's the road from, if you go out of Redditch, which isn't a posh place, through Astrid Bank, which also isn't a posh place, uh, but then as you're going out into the sticks a bit, you're coming into Cook Hill, uh, and that was quite a posh place with, you know, millionaires' pads uh, left and right. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, so we go, we go back, and I stopped at my uh, at my local. Um, did I? No, that was another night. No, ignore that. It would have been super late, wouldn't it? Yeah. So we get back to my place, and we have another drink, and we chat a bit more, and you know, one thing leads to another, and we end up in the bedroom. Uh, and at the time, I had a big big old four poster bed with the full the full kit and caboodle um you know with the lace hanging down all all, all, of, all of that crap uh and um <clears throat> uh so yeah so we end up in the bedroom and we've gone in there and uh we're drinking champagne and i've got the i've got the champagne in in a nice silver ice bucket uh, and you know I probably said something terribly cheesy like should we take this into the bedroom and she, well, yeah she was in there before me um, so we're in the bedroom we've got the champagne uh, it's in the ice bucket and so on and so on and so on and then she sort of said to me yeah I can't remember exactly what happened but at some point as proceedings are proceeding she said to me she said I like you and I trust you. And I thought, well, yeah, that's nice. Uh, and she said, can we play some games? Uh, and... <laughs> I'll cut this fairly short. Um... <clears throat> she wanted me to, um, to tie her to the bed uh, and spank her or thrash her. Um, and that was kind of a, a bit of a new thing for me 
at the at the time. Uh, so I've unwrapped it and I've 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 kind of tied it as a full poster. Uh, and I've um, you know I we've gone through it and I've spanked her with a hairbrush and. Uh, given her a couple of lashes with the old belt um, and you know she's well and truly into it properly getting off on it uh, and I'm just thinking well you know this is like the this is like the the queue for a roller coaster at Alton Towers I'm just going through the motions here before we can get to the good bit you know uh, but she's absolutely loving it and you know that's nice fair play to her that's what floats a boat you know I'm 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 happy to help, uh, and you know eventually when she's um, when she's had sufficient uh, female organisms, uh, and and she, oh God she came hard, um, <clears throat> I untied her, and sort of sort of thought right, jelly bean trick time here we go now we get to the bloody good stuff, uh, and sort of progressed in that direction and she said ah oh, no 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 your turn now and I sort of went uh no um <laughs> and um again um she made it very very clear that if I wanted to get to jelly bean trick times then I had to play the games because she liked dishing it out as well as she liked receiving it now Bear in mind, it's some ungodly hour in the morning now. She's a very attractive woman that I'd want to pod her anyway. Uh, but, you know, we've been naked in a bedroom full of champagne for some time. And I've been wailing away on her fantastic ass. You know, obviously, obviously, I am like a fucking rabid dog at this point. And I would have done anything to get to the point where you know where we get to the bloody good stuff so <clears throat> i said yeah okay she took various dressing gowns various dressing gown cords and other things from around the bedroom around the suite <sighs> she didn't just playfully tie me to that four poster bed she trussed me up like a chicken or like a Russian prisoner in a prisoner of war camp. I was going absolutely nowhere. And then, and then she absolutely beat the fucking living daylight out of me. She belted away at my ass with hairbrushes, with a belt, with any, all naked and, you know, wobbling around. Um, God, she, it hurt. There was nothing sexy about it at all. It absolute, it hurt like bloody hell. I mean, you know, it, it was like being back at public school and getting six of the best off the headmaster. There was nothing sexual about it at all. And I wanted it to stop, but she tied me up so properly that there was absolutely sod all that I could do about it. And then, to make matters worse, when she'd finished thrashing me, she shoved the remains of the ice bucket up my ass. Right? There. And then, and this is a good bit, she called a taxi and left. Leaving me full of ice, tied to the bed. Now, So, eventually, I managed to wriggle out of my restraints. And obviously, it's been a somewhat unusual evening. Um, and from memory, I think that I finished the champagne, had a vodka, smoked a bit, had something to eat and went to bed. 
Now, the next day, as usual, Rob rang me. It wasn't uncommon for me to end up going home with, uh, with a woman. And Rob would, being my best mate and boys being what they, what they are, Rob would ring me the next day uh, for, uh, for a progress report to find out, you know, what had gone on. And he's my best mate, so I told him. And I told him the absolute truth. But I made it clear that this was to go no further. This was strictly entre nous. This was, this was a Boaty and Rob thing, and it wasn't to go any further. And he swore that that would be the case. He lied. He lied. <clears throat> as soon as he got off the phone to me, he got on the phone to Sharon and to Mel and to everybody else and told them the story of what, what she now became known as the Ice Maiden. And so that was one thing. But Rob wasn't finished yet, my lovelies. We had another show the following night. I can't remember where it was. I've blocked it from my mind. I genuinely have no idea where it was. What I can remember was that my mother and my auntie Sue were in the audience. They were on one of their girls' nights out and they'd come to my show. And Rob chose that evening, when comparing, to tell the audience the story of what had happened to me last the, the previous night before I had to go out on stage and sing to these people. He told them everything, everything. And who was laughing the most? Who were wetting themselves? Virtually, literally, my mother and my auntie Sue. That's who was laughing the bloody most. And um, there, there you go, that was that. That was the story of the Ice Maiden. I never saw the girl again not ever but i was told by everybody who knew me that she actually left the area because the story got round. now you know me i've got no shame i you know i thought it was funny and i didn't care that everybody including my mother and my auntie sue <coughs> knew about it she on the other hand was mortified especially as everybody was now calling her the ice maiden and apparently she actually moved, left the area. I can't remember what her, what her name was. Um, I can't remember anything about her other than that was the story of the Ice Maiden. That is 100% true. That is 100% how it happened. Uh, and if you look at my friends list, you will find a guy called Rob Carling. Uh, and that's his stage name, by the way, that he's kind of taken as his real name now. And I gave him that name. I'm quite proud of that. <clears throat> so if you doubt a single word of this story, go on my friends list, find the guy called Rob Carling and ask him, message him and ask him to tell you about me and the Ice Maiden. And he will, te he will tell you the story. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. That is um, that is your girlfriend story for tonight. You've had the story of the the Ice Maiden. What else did you want? Sexy ones. There's oh loads of those American ones. I've told you about. I've told you about the Americans, haven't I? Um, I think you. I think you already know about the American ones. You know about Robin, the one that I went on the. Flew out to Chicago for the blind lunch date with and um, didn't come home, moved in with her. Um, you know that I slept with her PA when we had an argument and she went off to Vegas. Um, you know about the, um, you know about the number one worldwide hit, one hit wonder lady. She was American. Um, who else was there? There weren't that many in America, actually. Because... Um, Oh, uh, well, America version two, there's the Vegas ones. Um, oh, God, I've just remembered some of the African ones. Bloody hell. 
Um, I'll think. I'll, I'll I'll have a think and come up with some of the some of the good stories. Um, I'm having a vague memory of a mustard and boaty live stream where you had a disastrous date with a therapist, and I laughed so hard at it that I thought I was going to lose my bladder control. Yeah, that was. Um, <coughs> Yeah, I have talked about that. And again, that was absolutely true. Now, that was much more recent. Um, that was in my dating phase. That's very recent. What have I done with my wine? Where's that gone? Oh, I'll put it down here because it's frozen. Okay, I'll tell you that one before we go to bed. The therapist, yeah, okay, the therapist one. Um, right. After the divorce, and after, um, what happened after the divorce? Well, immediately after the divorce, obviously my wife's idea was that we should continue having a relationship. She wanted the divorce, she wanted everything, all of the assets in her own name. She still loved me, she still wanted to be with me. So that's kind of what happened after the divorce for a bit. But then I, <clears throat> then I kind of started dating, uh, and I I met um, I met Bernard, and Bernard kind of put an end to put a final end to the marriage because, um, you know, I thought, well, a I thought it's taken the piss a bit to take everything from me and take my entire life from me. Uh, and then just expect me to carry on as normal. Uh, and, you know, I love my wife. I never wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to be married for life. That's what, that's what I'm married for. Um, and so when that, you know, when she divorced me and she came up with that idea, I kind of went with it because I loved her. Um, but, you know, gradually I kind of realized that you kind of, you know, you've been taken for a bit of a ride here, son. And Bernard came on the scene and Bernard was younger and more beautiful and fucking hell, Bernard was amazing in bed. And I don't just mean nice, I don't just mean enjoy, I mean a different world. Absolute, a whole new level. God above. Um, so that put an end to, you know, that more than the divorce, that put a final end to the, the marriage kind of thing. Uh, and then, you know, Bernard's a raving barn pup, bless her. Uh, and that kind of wasn't going anywhere. Uh, and so there was a period in between Bernard and Boo where I was doing some relatively heavy duty dating uh, using various dating apps. Uh, and I had some really quite memorable uh, dates. And this was one of them. I can't remember what the uh, what the app was that I, I met this lady on. <clears throat> but it was one of them. And we agreed to meet up for a date on the Eccles Hall Road in Sheffield. Uh, I was living here. I was here at, at Windy Bum. I was driving a Mercedes A-Class that I paid £200 for called Herman the German. And the reason it turned out that somebody sold this, what seemed to be a lovely car for 200 quid, was that the starter motor was on the way out. And sure enough, shortly after I bought it, the starter motor completely failed. Uh, and I hadn't realized that on an A-Class Merc, to fit a new starter motor, uh, it's a chassis off job. It's like a two and a half grand job. So, you know, obviously I wasn't in a position to do that. But I liked this little Mercedes. I liked little Herman, the, the German. Um, so, um, <laughs> so I decided to carry on using it. It just meant that I had to always park it on a hill so that I could bump start it. Now, the problem was I was working at Sainsbury's in Chesterfield at the time. Um, and um, whilst the car park was sloping, it wasn't sloping enough for the car to pick up sufficient speed on its own for me to bump start it. So I used to have to push the car, run, 
push the car, then run around the side of the car, open the door, jump in, and then bump start it before it, before it slowed down. And that worked reasonably well most of the time, apart from one night where I stumbled trying to jump in and literally ran myself over with my own car. But anyway, I took this A-class Merc to the Eccles Hall Road in Sheffield for this date with this lady. And it was a very bohemian pub. <clears throat> and, um, and we met and we each had a glass of wine and I'll level with you, I'll be honest with you. Um, in person, the spark wasn't really there for me. Um, she wasn't quite my type. Uh, but, you know, um, you can still have a pleasant day when they're not absolutely your type. And <clears throat> that was how I used to approach dates. I used to try and, you know, whether there was a spark or not, whether it was going to go anywhere or not, at least enjoy the night. It's, um, it's a night out. It's a night out with company, uh, whatever. Um, so, yeah, so we're in this pub, uh, on the Eccles Hall Road, and, you know, we're chatting away and whatnot, and it turns out that she is a sexual therapist, um, and her job is to empower women, mostly, um, to take hold of their sexuality and own it and empower themselves and get the most out of their feminine sexuality and stuff. And I thought, yeah, okay, fair enough, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but the problem was that I've driven to this day, right? So I've had a glass of wine and we were there all night. Uh, and I've had two or maybe three small glasses of wine. So I know that I'm absolutely fine to drive. Um, I don't usually drink at all when I'm driving. Uh, I certainly don't now. Uh, I had a couple of glasses of wine. I knew I was well within the limit. We had a meal as well. So I'd eaten, <clears throat> so there was no problem. But while I'd had these few glasses of wine, she'd had about 17 bottles of the bloody stuff. And she is, absolutely stocious. She's well and truly on her way. You know, she's pissed. Uh, and being pissed, she is disinhibited. Um, so, and she smoked. So every so often we're nipping outside for a cigarette. And when we're outside and there's nobody to overhear us, She's telling me what she wants me to do to her when I take her home, right? And she's telling me in very excruciating detail. Now, that can be quite nice. That can be incredibly flirtatious and exciting. But when it goes past a certain point, and, you know, bear in mind, this is relatively recently. I'm in my mid-40s. <clears throat> at this point and it got to the point where I thought well <laughs> I'm not physically capable of this <laughs> quite frankly I doubt that I'm up to the job I mean you know when she, she's given I mean she's given a time scale that I'm thinking I, I've got to be at work I've got to be at work tomorrow uh, and even if I didn't have to be at work, you know, I mean, we've long gone past the point where, you know, I need eight hours sleep uh, and uh, and a nice cooked breakfast. Uh, I'm not going to be in any sort of shape to be doing what you're going to be expecting me to do at this point. Uh, and, you know, I, and some, I mean, some of it was illegal, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, it wasn't anything that I hadn't already done many times, but... Um, you know, it was just so, the sense of expectation was so high. I mean, it's one thing to, to say um, something that's, you know, exciting and like, I want you to lick every inch of me. 
Great. I'm fully on board with that. Absolutely. I'm your man. But when that goes into sort of, um, I want you to spend four hours and 37 minutes licking this particular part of me in this particular way until I've had 17 multiple orgasms. And then I want you to do this. And then I want you to do that. And I want you to do that for at least three days. Uh, and then I want you to do this. And while you're doing this, I also want you to be doing that with that which I will provide, and it's got fresh batteries. Uh, and whilst you're doing that, I'd like you to be doing that, and then I want you to move on to this, and, and I'm thinking, well, fucking hell. I mean, you know, there's no written instructions here. I'm supposed to remember all this, and, um, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> I wasn't up to the job. And bear in mind, right, bear in mind that um, I didn't fancy her that much to begin with. Uh, so, you know, yeah, if it was somebody that you're absolutely mad about, then obviously, obviously you're going to give it, you're going to give it your best shot, aren't you? You're going to give it your best shot, uh, and you're going to enjoy it while it lasts and deal with any disappointments afterwards and, you know, issue some apologies at appropriate parts. But, you know, I don't fancy her much. Um... And if any part of me did fancy her, then that has been well and truly pushed out of the equation by this insane list of expectations and requirements. And she's getting drunker and drunker and drunker. And at some point, <clears throat> I attempted to escape. I thought, right, enough's as good as a feast. What I really want now, I was still drinking back then, um, what I want now, I, I mean, I was drinking vodka, I was drinking the hard stuff. My old friend, Mr. Vodka, that uh, that I, I eventually gave up, however long ago it was, five years ago, something like that, um, because I used to get too drunk. Um, you know, a bottle of wine is one thing, um, half a bottle of vodka is quite another thing. Um, but I thought, I want to get home, I want to have a nice supper, uh, I want to have a vodka and tonic, and I want to go to bed and... You know, uh, I, I don't want to be thinking about having to spend the next 12 hours of my life trying to satisfy this crazy cow's insatiable bloody desires. And she's all tactile. She's all touchy-feely. She's touching me and she's rubbing me and she's holding parts of me, probably excess, bloody um, assessing them for suitability. And I'm not up for this. I'm not up for this in any way, shape or form. And I'd also remembered that uh, I'd parked Herman the German on quite a shallow slope, uh, but it was the steepest one that I could find. So I'm probably going to have to run and push this pissing car to start it. And am I really going to be in any shape to do that after this mad cow has spent 14 hours pottering me fucking senseless? Almost certainly not. I'd be stranded in Sheffield. I'd be flat out, winded in the gutter with a Mercedes that's just rolling away from me. And I'm too knackered to move. And I'd have a cock like a peeled prawn by the time she'd finished with it. Dear God. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I, wasn't, I wasn't having any of that. Um, so, <laughs> I... <laughs> I um, so at some point, we're inside the pub, we've had the last cigarette, she's crossed some line or other. I can't remember what, I think she grabbed hold of my cock or something and said something about, so I just, you know, at this point, I'm frightened. I'm, yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit I'm frightened. So I'm, I thanked her for a lovely evening uh, <clears throat> and I made my excuses and I went to leave. I said, you know, uh, she lived locally. I knew she would have no problem getting home. It was a, the pub was a regular. You know, if she was too trolled to walk, then the pub would have arranged a taxi for her. I thought what was probably more likely was she, she would pick another victim from one of the customers or staff and podger them instead. I didn't care. I just wanted to get the fucking hell out of there. <clears throat> and um, 
So, yeah, so I made my excuses uh, and she demurred, obviously, and but I was very forceful and I said, it's been absolutely lovely, blah, 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 blah. Uh, thank you for a lovely evening. Take care, good night. And I went to walk out of the pub, which was still full of people, right? We met early doors. It's now probably 10, half 10, something like that. And it's, um, it's a thriving boho pub on the Eccles Hall Road. Pub still full of people. And I'm on my way out of the door, uh, planning to give Herman the German a quick push, get the bloody thing started, fuck off home over Ola Bar. Um, and uh, <sighs> she ran from the table after me and she rugby tackled me literally to the ground. What she then did in her drunken state was to start screaming hysterically that I was very, 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 very drunk and I was going to drive a car and I was going to kill innocent children, pedestrians, animals for all that I know uh, and that I must be stopped at all counts. Now, thankfully, it was very clear that I was sober and she was absolutely arsehole. So nobody got on board with her. I escaped from her rugby tackle and I rapidly walked away from that pub. And I thought that would have been that. And it wasn't. I got Herman the German going I remember being very low on petrol, but I was too scared for, to, to stop at a petrol station uh, in case she'd been insanely running after me or chasing me in a taxi or something. So I got my ass out of Sheffield, up into the wilds, over Ola Bar, and I came back to Windy Bum. Uh, now, obviously, at that time I was running singles. I was doing a lot of online stuff. So when I got in, I logged online and I discovered um, that there was a message from her telling me that she had contacted the police and my employer to let them know that uh, I had been irresponsibly driving a car whilst very, 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 very drunk indeed, and I could expect repercussions, and I should be thoroughly ashamed of myself, etc., etc., etc. Now, obviously, none of this is true. This was her drunken, mad punishment for not shagging the arse off her, right? Um, and uh, I checked, and she did actually do it. She did contact my employers, and she did contact the police. So, what a mad night. She was drunk as a skunk, that's what she did. Uh, when all of that finished, the next day, I thought that was that, no problem. I could explain to my employers, they'll have a laugh. Uh, I can explain to the police whether they'll laugh or not, I don't know, whether they believe me or not, I don't know. But, um, you know, what can they do? It's in the past, they can't do me because somebody said I was driving, driving drunk. Um, so I thought that would be it, uh, except that at about lunchtime, presumably on her lunch break, I had another message from her saying, thank you for a lovely evening. Would you like to meet up again this evening? And dinner is on me. What do you reckon? Did I go? Did I fuck? Right, that is it, my loves. That is it for tonight. That is it, that is it, that is it, it, it. I'm going to get welded into my staff curry. Uh, I'm going to finish off this lovely bottle of slush. And I'm going to go to bed entirely on my own and be glad that I'm entirely on my own and that I'm not with some mad Sheffield sex therapist 
and that I'm not going to be woken up by a, a young, nubile Chinese lovely who's going to podger me when I'm not ready for it. God, somebody said the other day, I wonder why you're single or something like that. This is why I'm pissing single. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, there we are. There we are. Let's just have a look at, call a Mercedes. Uh, have you got a number? No, I bloody haven't. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Uh, da, da, da. There we are, there we are, there we are. There we are, my loves. Right, okay. Um, time to say goodnight. Um, it's all going to happen again tomorrow. Um, I will be here at um, 11 o'clock tomorrow. Not quite so late. And we'll do a fun hour. We'll do a nice 11 till 12. And we'll catch up. And... Um, there we, there we are. I love doing these. I love having your company. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Um, thank you to... Uh, thank you, Jimmy Quinn, for the uh, super thing and the little donation to the channel. And thank you to all of you who are helping the channel in any way, even if it's um, just watching the adverts to get that ad revenue coming in. It will all help. Thank you, my lovelies, and good night. You knew this was coming, didn't you? Told the whole of YouTube about the bloody ice moment. Dear God. <clears throat> Maybe I could get sponsorship from an ice cube manufacturer. See you tomorrow night, my notes. 11 o'clock. And we'll do it like they do in Scunthorpe. night my lovelies you take care stay safe stay warm and if we're spared i can't wait to see you tomorrow no no bloody button it never works oh come on